Hello and welcome. I'm Carol Ingram and I'm part of the Sulky Design Team. And I brought you a wonderful project today made with our Sulky products. Uh, the project is on my left. It's a beautiful free motion sunflower wall hanging. And as you can see, it's got lots of glitz. And the glitz comes from our wonderful thread. Our thread uh, is called Sliver and Hollow Shimmer, and they come in beautiful collections, which I have one here. This uh, collection comes in our slimline box, our beautiful slimline box, and it's clear. And it's a wonderful storage container for your threads. As you can see, when you open it up, it has these little flip tabs on the side. And just think, it doesn't fall out when you open it up, and it keeps everything in uh, organized fashion with all your numbers labeled. You just flip the little tab, pull your thread out, and put it back in, and you're ready to go. But what I'd like to talk to you about today is uh, the sliver thread, and I'd like to show you the uh, spool cap that flips off and open, and the thread unwinds and it holds it tight for you. You can just wrap it around like so, and press it down, or you can pop it up, flip it up, unwrap it. All of our spools have that type of uh, holder on the ends. As you can see here, uh, this thread is flat. This is our sliver thread. We have also our hollow shimmer thread, which has the same kind of flip top, and it has an extra layer to it. The extra layer is holographic, and you can see that by comparison. It is an, uh, one layer thicker and it's slightly thinner so it handles very very well in your embroidery machine when you're doing free motion. I'd like to talk to you about the types of needles that you need to use with this uh, as well as all the rest of our original metallic threads. We need to use an extra large needle, something with a larger eye, a 90 or 100, something in that neighborhood. With these threads I like to use our, whoop, there we go. I like to use our invisible thread. I have another one here. Our invisible thread comes in either smoke or it comes in clear. And I like to wind that in the bobbin. I like to wind it very slow when you put it in the bobbin because you uh, don't want it to stretch any at all. And what I'd like to do is wind it very, very slow and I wind it maybe a half to two thirds when I wind it. Uh, also, in our um, project today, we have another thread, which is one of my favorites, and this is a uh, 40 weight and a 12 weight, 100% cotton. Let me stand this back up so everyone can see and watch it glitter. Our 12 weight and our 30 weight comes in collections also, and as you can see, it's in a larger box, and we call this our universal storage box. When you open it up, it has the same flip taps as well as it has a place for the numbering so that you can keep track. One of the things that I like about this so well is the fact that our, our le colored labels tell us what kind of thread we ha what size thread we have. This is our orange label and it's 12 weight. This is our brown label and it's 30 weight. So when you have your collection, and you look on your shelf and you look at the end, you can see that it's either a brown labeled or it's an orange labeled and you know that you have the right container when you pick it up. And these are so wonderful for storage because it keeps the dust and it helps filter the light away from your threads so that your threads can stay uh, clean and useful. Now today I'd like to start on the project that we have and as you can see the background on this project, the strip piece. You can see the strippers, the strips going here. And we uh, laughingly like to talk, call ourselves the strippers. And I know that a lot of you strippers want to have curves, but for this project, we don't want to have curves. So what I'm going to do is show you how that we can strip piece, long 45 inch wide strips without getting a curve in the middle of your uh, in the middle of your panels or in the middle of your sets. And we're going to do that by starting with uh, sets. Now the project that we have 
is sunflowers. And in order to do this technique, we have to have um, fabric that has a large motif in it. As I have some selections here to show you that these are the types of fabrics that I'm referring to. Something that you can take and you can cut out the large flowers and make a design like we have. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do for the background though is we're going to select a, a collection of fabrics for the background. And as you can see, this collection of fabrics is quite muted. We want something that's not going to fight with our applique. And so I've chosen this range. I also have another range if you like a darker background. And so we're going to take these fabrics, we're going to cut them all in two and a half inch strips. This one is going to be across the 45 inch width. So now when you sew this strip, and then you bring in another one and you sew the other one, that's when you're going to get your curves to your strips. Well, we're going to show you a way today how not to get those curves. We want, as this shows here, we want all of these strips to be straight. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew the first strip. Uh, let me put it this way. We're going to sew the first strip up. We're going to sew the third strip to the second strip and we're going to sew it in the opposite direction. So we've got one sewn this direction, one sewn this direction, and we're going to call that set one. We're going to take another set of three strips. We're going to sew this set, one set going down and one strip going up. So we're going to call that strip two. And then we're going to do the same for the third set, always in the opposite direction. What that does is that prevents all that pushing from going one direction. You're going to push this way, or when you stitch, it's going to stitch and slightly push this way, and then you're going to reverse it so that it prevents all that curve going in one direction. Once you have your three sets, then you're going to sew your three sets together like so, and then you're effectively going to have all your strips straight. So we're going to keep all the curves out of our strippers. Let me remove these for you. Okay, once we've done that, then we're going to, let's just pretend like that we've got all these three sets sewn together right here. We're going to place this onto where we're going to make our sandwich. And everyone knows what the sandwich is when we're quilting. Those two are, mat are the same print, so I don't want them side by side. So I'm going to put the opposite print over here. All right. So now we have this all sewn together, so we're going to want to make a sandwich. So our sandwich is our top and our batting, and then we're going to have to have a backing. Well, in this case, I want to do a lot of free motioning, and I don't want it to show on the back side before I put my actual backing on the back of it. So I'm going to substitute my backing, and I'm going to put a stabilizer. And this stabilizer is new with Selkie. It's called Selkie's Tender Touch. It's a permanent iron-on cutaway stabilizer. And what it's really good for is in embroidery, if you do an embroidery on a blouse and it's itchy, or if you use a metallic thread and sometimes on the back side when you wear it, well, this is a wonderful stabilizer that you can iron on the back side and it will be soft to the touch. This uh, stabilizer, if you'll run your hand over it like